Amen. Welcome to the house of the Lord tonight. How many excited to get something from Almighty God tonight? Let's stand and go before the Lord in prayer. Invite the presence of God to flood this sanctuary. I love when they sing that song, Consuming Fire, Sweet Perfume. His awesome presence fills this room. We want the presence of God to fill this room this evening. And we want to tap into the mighty power of Almighty God. Why don't you worship Him from your heart and spirit? Thank Him right now. Bless the wonderful name of Jesus. You know, he said something in the, in the message this morning. He said, you know what? Worship is God's part of the service. It's that time where we adore him. We, we lift him up. We magnify him. We thank him for what he's done and thank him for what he's going to do. Just take time and thank the Lord this, this afternoon, church. is good and this time pastor is going to sing a couple songs as unto the Lord so let's get in and let's worship God from the heart amen amen praise the Lord let's turn to song page 321 on your song books there a higher ground how many will go higher tonight amen I'm pressing on the upper way new heights of pain
saved by, by faith, faith on every stable land. land. A higher plane, a higher plane that I have found. Go plant my feet on higher ground. Go ahead and praise Him, church. Praise the Lord with us this morning. God, this evening, God, we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, God, and bless you, God. We thank you, God, in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Just worship the Lord right now as they prepare to sing another song. Take time and thank him tonight. Glorify him, magnify him. Lift up and exalt the name of Jesus Christ. You now I love it in the Old Testament. It says, shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. We sing that song sometimes. Don't wait till the battle is over to shout the victory. We have to shout in victory and believe it and speak it into our lives. They're going to sing another song as unto the Lord. Let's have a good time in the house of the we Lord. We have tonight. victory Amen. in Jesus' church this evening. Amen. 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 Jesus gives victory. Let's take this song on page 240 in your song books. Well, I heard an old, old story. How a Savior came from glory. How he gave his life from Calvary to save a wretch like me. Jesus set me free. Satan had me bound. Satan had me bound. But Jesus set me free. 
Give us a series of victories this year. It felt good being in the house of the Lord this morning and being in the presence of God, the presence of the people. There's nothing like being in the church house, amen. You can't replace online. It felt good to be in the presence of God, the presence of the saints. Take time and worship him and praise him tonight. Glorify the name of the Lord. I really believe God wants us to be impregnated with victory on the inside of our spirit, on the inside of our souls. And I believe great things are coming this year as we surrender and give ourselves wholly to Almighty God. We ought to be addicted to the work of God, addicted to the things that God desires on the inside of our lives. Take time and thank Him, church. And after you finish, you may be seated. studies uh tuesday night 7 30 thursday night service 7 30 that's going to be both online and then be with us next sunday at 11 o'clock in the house of the lord we'll pray father god lord we thank you for the opportunity to give to you a portion of that which you've given to us we ask you right now to bless both the gift and the giver in christ jesus name we pray amen
grace. Praise the Lord with all of our hearts and our souls. We're going to watch God play with the way. Lord, you are good. Yes, Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. tonight amen amen give him worship tonight give him all the praise that he is due today lord we you are good you are awesome you are mighty god you deserve it all he's been more than we deserve today church more than what we deserve tonight how we serve an awesome awesome mighty mighty god we give you thanks and glory tonight we give you glory for all that you do hallelujah 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 perhaps we'll try one more one more before reverend comes amen amen one more one more one more it's unto the Lord, unto the Lord, amen. This song says we're trading our sorrows, amen. We want to leave out of this meeting different, amen. How many want to do that today? Let's leave out differently so we trade our sorrows, we trade all of our fears, everything that we go through, we're going to trade it in for the joy of the Lord, amen, amen, amen. Praise God. We got it working, amen. I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my shame, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord, I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my Yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, 
say yes Lord yes Lord yes yes Lord and we say yes Lord yes Lord yes yes Lord amen oh God wants us to say yes tonight and we say yes Lord yes Lord yes yes Lord oh yes Lord yes Lord yes yes Lord oh yes Lord yes Lord yes yes Lord We say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. We say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, 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 Lord. Amen. Amen. Though sorrows may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading. I'm trading. Give God praise tonight. As the Reverend prepares to come, give him glory. Give him praise tonight as we say yes to the Lord tonight. And let's open up our hearts tonight. Let's open up our hearts and give God, no doubt, our attention. Let's begin to glorify him. Let's begin to glorify Father, him. Father, we love you. We thank yes. you tonight. Hallelujah. Yes. Come on thank you for your presence. Worship you. Worship thank you for the moving of your spirit, God. Yes. Thank you, yes. 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 Lord, yes. for all you've done, all you're going to do. Lord, we appreciate you. God, we give you thanks. We give you glory. How good you are to us, God. Thank you. Thank you for saving. Thank you for healing. Thank you, God, for a place to come and worship. Lord, we appreciate it. We give you glory. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Good to be in God's house tonight. Glad to see everybody. I would say smiling faces, but uh, uh, smiling eyes, amen? It's uh, good to be in the house of the Lord. You know, um, in New York, it's kind of tough with the parking situation sometimes, a little expensive today, too. It reminded me of this lady. She, was, uh, uh, she went to the bank to borrow $5,000, and the bankers kind of looked at her and said, uh, well, why should we borrow, lend you $5,000? You, you have any collateral? And she said, well, yes, I have a Rolls Royce. They kind of shook their heads, and, and uh, she brought the paperwork in. It was paid for, title, everything, and so they gladly lent her $5,000. And a week later, she came back, and she paid off the $5,000 plus the $15 of interest, and uh, the bankers were really curious. They said, man, we, we got to know. We don't understand. We checked you out. We found out that you're a millionaire, and, and why would you borrow $5,000? She said, where else in New York can I park my car for a week and only pay $15, amen? <laughs> and that's true. We paid $19 for a few hours today, so we know the deal. Yeah, it's good to be in God's house. Glad for everybody here. I want to read to you from the book of John, chapter 10. John, chapter 10. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief, and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. Think about that for a second. A shepherd with 100, 150, 200 sheep, and he knows them all by name. Amen? And when... He putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. 
I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Thief, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. One more portion. Revelation 3 and 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and hast not denied my name. And tonight with the help of the Lord, I want to preach to you on the top of a message, open door, open door. Let us pray. Sir, would you please pray? Amen. When I was in Bible college, I worked a construction job. One day I came home, Brother Whitlock, believe this, this is a little strange, but I came home, not that dinner was cooked, that's not strange, but my wife had cooked dinner and I was kind of hungry, you know, coming in from work and I was ready to sit down and eat, but for whatever reason, she really wanted me to get cleaned up first. And so she began to playfully push me towards the bathroom, not mean or anything, but just, you know, and kind of pushing me back like this. Come on, go ahead, take a shower, get cleaned up. Then you can come out and get something to eat. And she kept on pushing. I was kind of laughing. I said, what's this lady doing, right? <laughs> I'm ready to grub, but she was, all right, I guess I'll go get a shower. But as she pushed me back the last time, I hit the bathroom door and she had a bowl of water perched on top of the door. So when I hit the door, it came flying down, and she was in hysterics. Beware of Sister Devonshire, amen? <laughs> Behind that mask, you might not know what she will do to you. You see, behind doors are sometimes unpleasant surprises or pleasant surprises. And we don't know. Doors can be a blessing. Doors can be a curse. If you're on the outside and you're trying to get in, the door's locked. You've ever found yourself in that situation? It's a, a frustrating event because you want to be inside, but the door is keeping you from getting in. But if you're on the inside and somebody's on the outside trying to get to you and the door's closed and it's locked, it's a comforting thing to have that door between you and the guy on the outside. Amen? Amen. So it all depends on which side of the door you are. Now, I read to you tonight in the book of John, and, and we're based out of St. Louis. We pastor a church in St. Louis, and we've been teaching out of John about John, uh, Jesus being the, the good shepherd over the sheep, and it's a fascinating. If you know a little bit about the shepherding, it's fascinating. Like I said, he knows all of these sheep by name. And I like this part. The Bible said that the sheep know the shepherd's voice. Yeah, think about that for a second. How can they know the shepherd's voice? Because he's constantly talking to them. And if God, giving us this parallel, is telling us that he's constantly talking to us, sometimes we don't hear because there's so many other voices. There's so much other noise. But he's constantly talking. And, and you say, I want to know God's voice. Listen. And, and you can, you'll hear his voice. You'll begin to discern the voice of God. But in that Bible setting, he, he spoke about how, or the, the, the history tells us that sometimes in the morning time, they would have this enclosure around their house and they would bring the sheep in. And when it, it got time for them to go out, they would take the sheep out to a pasture. Usually they also had an enclosure out there and they would feed the sheep and the shepherd would then be at the, the gate of this enclosure. And if the sheep wanted to go out and feed, they could. Or if they wanted, if they were scared and they wanted the safety of the shepherd, he would allow them to come in. He was the door that both protected those who were on the inside and watched over those who were on the outside. And it wasn't speaking about salvation being coming in and out of salvation, but it was speaking about being under the protection of God or going forth uh, uh, under the, the, uh, uh, a purpose or a mission for God and God, Jesus, the door watching over us. Amen? Yeah. And so the first question I've got to ask you tonight is which 
side of the door are you on? Are you on the inside? Do you know that you've got Jesus protecting you? Man, that's good, isn't it? To know that Jesus is watching over me, that Jesus, sometimes it seems like you come to church and I'm like you, Brother Johnson, I want to be in the house of God with my brothers and sisters. Online service is great when that's all you got, but it's not the same. Amen? Because we have to understand coming to church is not just about us. And the mindset of a consumer is, I'm coming to get something. But I am not to be just a consumer, I am to be a contributor. And so when I come and I bring my praise, and I come and I bring my worship, and I come and I bring my presence, and I come and I influence somebody else, I'm contributing to the church and the excitement and the zeal and the faith. And so I can't do that. I can shout amen to those online, but I can't hear if they're saying amen back. I hope you are. <laughs> at least encourage your wife or your husband or maybe the neighbor next door, right? They might call the police. Why in the world is somebody screaming next door? They're getting happy. It's all right. So which side of the door are you on? Inside, you are protected, a member of the household. But if you're on the outside, there is no protection. You're a stranger, as the Bible called an alien. And that's why Jesus was saying, he said, I'm the door. The only way that you can get into this fold, this family of God, is to come through me. Not any other name under heaven given among men that we can be saved by. He said, you've got to come through Jesus. And there's a lot of people that they, they try to get away from that. Though even in church, you'll hear them say, God, and, and God is God, that's true. But there's a specific name. A name above every name, amen? And that's the name of Jesus. And so Jesus said, if you want to come in, you've got to go through me. And if you're coming over the wall, that shows me you're a thief. Uh, you're trying to come in the, the, uh, uh, through the back, that shows me you're a robber. If you want to be a part of my family, you've got to come through me. But that, the, the Bible did not say that an open door always stays open. Because the door that's open today, and I like open doors, it speaks of welcoming somebody in. No one likes having the door shut in their face. That's probably not your friend on the other side, amen? But when they look out the window and they open it up, it's like, welcome, man, that's a good feeling. But if they look out the window and they walk away and lock the other lock, that's not a good feeling, amen? So an open door doesn't always stay open. There must be an urgency. When God said, I've set before you an open door, it also spoke that you've got to walk through it. Because an open door doesn't mean you're on the inside yet. It just means the way for you to get from the outside to the end is made plain. But you've got to do something about it. And I think sometimes we miss this. We're waiting for God to do everything. We're waiting for God to change us. We're waiting for God to do all these other things. God will, but he, he works with man. Think about this. In the Old Testament, the Bible said Moses was leading the children of Israel out of Egypt. And they got to the Red Sea. This is interesting. I like this. And it said, Moses said to the people, stand still and see the salvation of God. And then right afterwards, God says, hey, why are you stopping? Go forward. Amen. Why are you stopping? Sometimes, sometimes, even the leader had gotten it wrong, Moses, amen? He was saying, stand still, slow down. And God said, I didn't tell you to stop. I want you to go forward. But they had to do something. God opened the door by parting the Red Sea. But the Israelites had to step over themselves, amen? It's not good enough for God to set an open door if they would have stayed on the Egypt side. They had to cross over, amen? I like in the New Testament, same type of situation. You know about... Um, about when they went up to the gate beautiful. I was going to say Paul, but I knew it wasn't Paul. Peter and John went up at the gate beautiful. Caught myself before. Once, you, once it gets online, you, you know, they put you on Facebook and say you're an idiot. So don't want that to happen. Amen? But they got to the gate beautiful. And there was a man begging there. And as he was begging, uh, Peter said to him, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And what happened? Oh, you guys are all good students of the Bible. Usually when I say, what happened? People will say, he got up and walked. But that's not what happened. 
Because when he said, silver and gold have I none, such as I have give I thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk, he didn't move. The, the disciple had to go and take him by the hand, all right, and pull him up. And then he realized, I can do, and he began to leap and jump and dance, everything else. Now, real quick question. Do you think he was able to get up before the disciple pulled him up? Yes, he was. So there was something he was able to do, but he didn't realize he could do it until somebody else helped him. I like that because sometimes I've, I've been in that situation. God wanted me to do something, and I thought it could never happen. I don't have faith for that. And then Pastor Davis came on by, and he took me by the hand, and he lifted me up. And I said, hey, it can happen. I want to be... I've been the, the, the lame man and, and waiting for somebody to pick me up, but now I want to be the, the man like Peter who will come by and help pick somebody up. I want to inspire and motivate. You see, he had the power to do it. He just didn't know it. Sometimes we're waiting for God. Maybe the guy was waiting. All right, you said uh, stand up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ, but uh, nothing's happening because he wasn't trying. Faith has to be mixed with action. And so there's an urgency. An open door today doesn't mean it's always going to stay open. And so God says, hey, when you have a chance, here's what the Bible said. Seek the Lord while he may be found. What was that meaning? There's coming a day where the door will close. There's coming a day where you won't have a chance. This, you know, we take it for granted. Thank God we've got a Sunday night service here in Brooklyn, New York. Thank God. Why? Because people take it for granted. There are places in the world they cannot gather and worship. There are places in the world they cannot lift up their hands and sing to Jesus and worship. And people take it for granted. We should treasure what we have and every time we can be in God's house because the doors might not always be open. There's an urgency. There's an urgency. What are you waiting for? In the New Testament, when the disciples were watching Jesus rise into heaven, the angel came down and said, hey, why stand ye gazing? What are you doing? You can't just sit there and think about Jesus being gone. You've got work to do. He's trained you for three years. It's time to do it. There's a great door open, Paul said, in the book of 1 Corinthians, verse 9. He said, for a great door and effectual is open unto me. And then he said, and there are many adversaries. So Jesus opens a way for us to come into the family through him. He died and paid the price for my sin. But it does not mean that if there is an open door, it doesn't come with a fight. And I don't know about you, but when I got saved, there was a fight. As soon as I got saved, the devil was after me trying to get me to go back to the world, trying to get me to doubt what God had done, trying to, to, dis, to discredit the, the people of God, the church of God, the preacher of God, all those things. There was a fight. But you see, with every opportunity, there comes an adversary. The devil's not going to just stand back. Hey, you can serve God. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost. You can be healed. You can build a church. You can be all that God wants you to be. But you got to understand it's going to come with a fight. And if God has set before you an open door, if God has given you an opportunity, if God has given us a chance to soul win and tell somebody, the door might not always be open. We saw how quickly in the pandemic the church world changed. And I hope, I hope that everybody gets vaccinated and this thing, we reach herd immunity and people kind of come out of that fear and we can go back but it's also taught us something. That what we thought was normal and we could always count on, we can't always count on. And so we can see how that it would be very easy for something to come up and the government to shut us down. Amen? And not have an open door anymore. That's why while we have the open door, let's invite everybody we can. While we have the open door, let's preach every service we can. Let's gather every time we can. While we have the open door, let's make a move because the door might not always be open. The door is open for opportunity, but there's something else. Once I step in, I got to shut the door on my past. I got to say, so long to the friends and the things that are hounding me. Because when we go forward in God, there's always something in the back trying to pull us back, amen? 
And you have to tell them with a firm determination, a final say so. No, I'm not interested. No, my mind is made up. I tell the story of uh, having to do, if you're a husband, you've probably had to do this. Accompany your wife shopping. That's not my favorite thing in the world when she's clothes shopping or whatever. And so we were shopping and I wasn't too happy and I guess it kind of showed. I was just kind of moping around. When will the torture end, you know? (laughs) Kind of going like this. Lord, help her to find it quickly. I'll pay whatever it is, God. Just let us get out of here. Amen. (laughs) And so as we were walking around and she was shopping, there's nothing wrong. There was something that happened to women in the fall, I guess. So (laughs) I'm teasing. (laughs) Something, uh, uh, she got ahead and she was looking at something and there was a space between us. She was up there and I'm just like, oh Lord, here we go. And about that time, this young girl came up to me and she had a pair of panties on her finger, her fingers. And she went like this, how do you like these on me? I said, hey, I'm married. Let me go find my wife. Because my mind was made up ahead of time. I already shut the door. I don't want to go back to that. There's no woman worth my salvation. There's no young chick out there that's better than Jesus. You got to shut the door. As long as you keep it open just a little bit, there'll be somebody who will push it in. But when you shut it and say, Jesus, you hold the door. You keep them on the outside. I don't want to go back to that anymore. I like being on the inside. Slam the door on temptation. Make a firm no to sin's offer. Let me give you just one more. You see, sometimes we find the doors of opportunity in the middle of our trouble. In the book of Hosea, I believe it is, he said, he said, I will make you, it's in here somewhere, I will make you, I will give you a door of hope in the valley of Achor. A door of hope in the valley of Achor. Now, that sounds good, door of hope, praise God. But you know a little bit about the Valley of Achor, it really makes it that much more interesting. Because the Valley of Achor was where Achan, the man that disobeyed God, when God said, everything that's the first fruits belongs to me. And so when you get it, make sure you give it to me. I'm going to take care of you at the next city. But the first city belongs to me. And Achan said, I don't believe you, God. I'm going to do it my way. And he took a a wedge of gold and he took some clothes and some Babylonian garments and and he hid them as if God doesn't see what's hidden in your tents. Amen. And it wasn't long until God uh, told Joshua, I'm going to cut the story short. God told Joshua, hey, you got sin in the camp. That's why God can't bless, I can't bless you. And he said, you bring all the the heads out and they they called the one uh, tribe. He said, you. He said, now you bring all the the families out. And they called the one family and said, "Uh, your family. You bring all the people out. And they called. And then they said, then you line them up one by one. And then they said, Achan. (laughs) You can imagine what Achan was feeling like right about then. How did they know? How did they know? Hey, listen, God knows. God knows. The pastor might not know. Your wife, your husband, your children might not know. But God knows. And there will be a day where we'll stand before God just like that. I want to remember that. Because if things get wrong in my life, I want to make them right because I know one day it's going to be exposed to everybody. So why live a hypocrite life now? Amen. And so the Bible said that they picked up stones because Achan didn't have a chance. Achan did not take the opportunity to repent. God had to ferret him out. Instead of Achan making it right when he had a chance. And they picked up the stones and they threw them on Achan and Achan died. And they called that valley the valley of Achor, which means the valley of trouble. Now, here's the thing real quick. Trouble's okay to deal with if it comes not by your doing. If you have to deal with the weather, we can deal with trouble that way, right? If we have to deal with uh, something at work because the boss man's just having a bad day, we can deal with things that way. But it's a whole, whole lot harder to deal with trouble when we are the ones that brought it about. When I have to face myself and said, I'm the reason why 
this isn't working. I'm the reason why I'm having a difficult time here. I, a difficult time here. I'm the reason why. And sometimes, sometimes it even makes us, I don't know about you, but me, it even makes me, it undermines my faith in my prayer because I got this trouble going on because of stuff that I did, amen, or didn't do. And now I'm going to come to God and say, God, can you bail me out, right? Because I didn't do this or I did this and I shouldn't have done that. And now I need help. And, but God is merciful. You see, Achan didn't come to, he didn't come to God and ask that. But God is merciful. He said, I'll give you a door of hope in the valley of trouble. Even when it's our fault. Even when we've done the thing wrong. If we come to God in humility and say, God, I need help. God will say, I'll open a door for you. You come on inside. I'll, I'll make you clean again. I'll give you a brand new beginning. It's up to you. And, you know, and when Jesus died, the Bible said that the veil of the temple was ripped from the top to the bottom. The veil was a place that separated where the priest could go and the normal people. And the normal people weren't allowed to go into the presence of God. It had to be done through the priest, kind of like it used to be in, in, in the Catholic churches and whatever else. You can't read the Bible. It's for us. Until there was reformers that came and said, listen, you need to be able to read what God said because you're going to be judged by it. And so when God tore the veil, it was as if we was, he was saying, I'm making an open door. You can come in now. I want to have fellowship with you. I, you I'm making access to whosoever will. Rich or poor, white or black, yellow, purple, plaid in between. He said, come on in. But you see, you have got to make that move. One story and we're going to close it. Nabil Koresh was a, a medical student. And in his book, Seeking Allah and Finding Jesus, he talks about his very Muslim family and past. And he wasn't one of the guys that just says they're a Muslim, but you see him doing all the crazy stuff. His family were true Muslims practicing, memorizing the Quran, all of this stuff. He went to medical school and made friends with another student who was a born again Christian. It's kind of a weird friendship, you know? But they began to explain each other's religions one to another. And the born again Christian took time to love Nabil. And when Nabil would come up with reasons why he didn't believe the gospel and Jesus were true, the born-again Christian would do the research and he'd bring it back to Nabil. And Nabil, being a very educated man, he's becoming a doctor, right? Very educated man, very smart man, would read it with an open mind. And things began to happen in his life. And as he began to read it, he'd come back and he'd try to, to, to counter it. But that Christian was, was smart and he'd redo the, do some more research and he'd bring the stuff to Nabil. And Nabil said, it finally got to the place where he understood that Jesus had died for mankind and he was God. He understood the gospel was true, but he had not personally accepted it. And he was sitting there wondering, I know it's true. I know it's right. I know Jesus is God and died for me. Why haven't I accepted it? And about that time, his father walked in and it clicked on. And he realized, when I accept Christ, it's going to blow my family up. And he had a very dear, near relationship with his father. And he knew it would make his father's heart break. And he, he knew that it was going to be a huge cost to his family. And it would shame them and their Muslim community. But eventually he understood there's only one thing I can do. Jesus is God. I must serve him. And he got saved. And he became a great apologist for Christianity. When I think about that, it makes me wonder because sometimes I think that people don't understand and are unwilling to pay the price of Christianity. And it's cheap to them. I'll, I'll take it if I want it. If I don't want it, oh well. It won't cost me anything. It'll cost you your soul your eternity. And so he understood the price. What comes too cheaply, we don't value very highly. 
And when he understood, he said, I'm going to serve God. He ended up serving God, becoming a, a, a minister. He died an early death in his, I think it was in his 40s or 30, late 30s, something like that. He died an early death. And you kind of wonder, man, uh, what a shame. But he had a powerful testimony. He understood that it was real, and he entered into the door. What about you tonight? You see, I believe God set before us an open door. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, he's saying, come on the inside. If you're a Christian, you've got a ministry, a, a mission. It doesn't, you don't even have to be a minister to have a ministry. You've got a mission. And God's saying, I've got a job for you to do. There's a great door open, but you have got to act because the door may not always be open. Would you bow your head and close your eyes as the pastor comes to lead the altar call? Praise God. The door is open. The door is open tonight. No doubt Jesus is that door, and we come before him tonight. We begin to come before him. It's already been opened up. Say, God, I let me walk through. God, I want to go through that door, Lord. Door of opportunity, door in which God has for each of us. Let's answer that call. Let's answer what God has spoken to you about. And let us begin to say, God, I'll do it. God, I'll go. God, I'll, I'll go through. God, I'll. Accept the invitation tonight. And God, whatever you want me to do, Lord, I am willing. Tonight, let's make that our prayer tonight as the altar prayers open, wherever you may be tonight. If you're one that needs prayer tonight, lift up your hand. We'll pray with you. If you need a prayer of salvation tonight, Jesus can save you tonight. He is that door. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. Tonight, Jesus is calling you. As, as us believers tonight, let's ask, open, go through that door of higher ground to get better for Christ. To go higher up in Christ. He calls us to greater days ahead. He's making it available to you and I. Brothers and sisters, let's come before the Lord tonight. Let's seek his face. Let's seek his face tonight. God, we ask you. Have your way, Lord. Speak to minds and souls tonight. Oh, God, we thank you, God, tonight for opening up for us, providing, God, a way of escape, a way to a better life. We bless you. We thank you. We thank you.
Praise God, everybody. Amen. It's been good to be here in the house of the Lord. And we truly, truly appreciate Reverend and Sister Devonshire coming. No doubt to spend a little bit of time with us here in Brooklyn. Amen. I mean, looking forward to, again, be excited about the years and days ahead. Amen. Working with him and learning from him. And, and no doubt he's excited for us. Amen. As we go higher, higher, higher. I remember years ago, Reverend D. Francesco came and preached the message. Amen. Pastor Davis came, but Reverend D. Francesco preached one of the services. He said, you know, again, this is an opportunity of a lifetime. That was a nice title of the message. And you know, you think about that, an opportunity of a lifetime. Again, that God opens up for us. And no doubt the future is bright, brothers and sisters, tonight. The future is bright. As we go forward, how many going to go forward with us? Amen. Go forward as we continue to look to rebound. Amen. New York will rebound. We're bouncing back one day at a time. One day at a time. It was awesome to see each many of them this morning and you tonight you tonight continue to come be with us continue to come with us as we continue to grow as a church amen and looking forward to, I'll be saying God can bless in the midst of a pandemic God can still bless amen God still moves God still is able to do great and mighty things he's a God that cannot fail tonight amen so we're thankful for them and continue to pray for them again as they travel back to their home church St. Louis he's a pastor in St. Louis the pastor in St. Louis who's trying to keep here again, so we kind of kept it uh, quiet. But uh, he's the pastor in St. Louis, uh, there, Missouri. Uh, again, that's, that's really the original headquarters of the church, I guess, New Testament Christian Church of America. And so we're grateful that he came to be with us this weekend. And so, again, and they continue to uh, pray for them as they journey, journey and, and new endeavors again to help minister unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's stand to our feet tonight. As we dismiss in prayer, we look forward to seeing you Tuesday night Bible study, Tuesday night Bible study, Thursday night service, again and twice again here on Sunday. Amen. God bless you. As we go ask Reverend Johnson, sir, if you'll dismiss in prayer tonight.